With this video, I'm going to show you some of the options you'll have once you integrate with QuickBooks, as well as how the sync is going to look on both the back end of your website as well as within QuickBooks. To do this, we're going to be spending most of our time in the membership billing menu. Uh, on this page, you do always have the option to look up a specific member. Uh, if we do that now, we're going to see a new option that's appearing, which are these uh, QuickBooks color-coded boxes to the left of each transaction. Uh, each color is going to mean something slightly different. If it's green, that means that this transaction is already over in QuickBooks. If it's red, then that means that this transaction has been marked to not go over to QuickBooks. And if it's yellow, that means this transaction is pending a sync to go over to QuickBooks. So next time that you sync with your QuickBooks, these transactions in yellow would be getting sent over. If you ever want to see the transactions that are pending to go to QuickBooks, we can head back into our billing menu and come under the tab of QuickBooks interface and see the option of sync transactions with QuickBooks. On this page, we'll be able to see all of our transactions that are pending. We can see that John Smith has the two transactions we saw in yellow, both the payment and the invoice. We can also see this QB Cust ID, which is the customer ID number that this member is mapped to over in QuickBooks, as well as the item, which is telling us that this invoice is mapped to a particular item in QuickBooks. If you ever have a member who is not mapped to a QB customer, or if you need to change who it's mapped to, you can click on the QB Cust ID link, and you'll be brought to a search page like this. On this page, you can search the member's name as it would appear in QuickBooks. And if we click Submit to do that, we can see that John Smith has a matching record here with the same address. If this is who we want this member to be mapping to over in QuickBooks, all we have to do is click to link to this customer. We can see that in this case, he kept that same customer ID, uh, but if he hadn't been mapped yet and we clicked that, he would now have that new customer ID appearing. Uh, if the member does not have a customer ID um, and they are already set up in QuickBooks, you will want to make sure to map them before sending the transaction over. Otherwise, if it's a new member who does not yet have a customer ID in QuickBooks, you can just leave them be. Uh, the first time you sync a transaction, the member will create a new QuickBooks customer when they go over and the transactions will sync there from then on out. Uh, if the invoice does not have an item number, uh, you will have to set that invoice up with an item number before you are able to sync with QuickBooks, uh, but we're going to learn how to do that right now. So if we head back into our billing menu uh, and we head under data export, you will see options to edit general ledger accounts as well as edit classes. If we edit the general ledger accounts, uh, we'll see our list here of the current ones that we have set up. Uh, if you ever want to set a new one up, all you have to do is click Add New GL Account. Uh, you're able to add an account number if you'd like. Uh, this is not required, but depending on how you do your accounting, you can, of course, enter that. Uh, your description is needed as well as a QB item. Uh, we recommend making your description the same as the QB item name uh, just to avoid any confusion. Uh, so that way, when you are assigning them throughout the system, you're sure you're choosing the correct one. Uh, once everything looks correct, you can just click Submit, and that will add it to the list. Uh, it will give you the description name you entered, as well as the QB item that it was mapped to. Uh, these GL accounts within our system are going to map to items within QuickBooks, so those will be products and services. Uh, once you have all of the general ledger accounts set up the way you'd like, you can head back out to the billing menu. Uh, if you are using classes, you do also have the option to edit classes. Uh, this will work the same way, where if you change or create a new class, you can give it a name, uh, mark if you'd like it to appear on this list or be hidden, uh, and then if you are using classes, which in this case our system is not, you'd also be able to choose the class within QuickBooks that this class within MemberLeap should map to. Once you have all of the general ledger accounts and classes set up that you would like, you do have to assign them throughout the system. Any transaction that is going over to QuickBooks will need to have a general ledger account assigned, and if you're requiring classes, then it would also need to have a class assigned. Uh, this means each 
transaction type within your system does need to have a GL account assigned. Uh, for instance, if you were going to send over an invoice for membership dues, uh, we would come into the member database and go to plans, uh, and we could edit the membership plan that we're sending an invoice over for. Uh, on this page, you can see that you have a few general ledger account options. So we have general ledger account, renewal dues GL account, class, and renewal dues class. Uh, so if your initial membership dues are going somewhere other than where your renewal membership dues are going to, you can assign two different GL accounts. Uh, if we click on this drop down, we can see uh, the general ledger accounts that we have set up within our system. By default, you'll First tab, select general ledger account appearing, but then you will be able to choose from any of the general ledger accounts currently set up within your system. Uh, this will be the same for your classes as well. Once everything is set up the way you'd like, you can just scroll to the bottom of the page and click continue. Uh, this will save those changes for you. And now any invoices within your system that are for your membership dues for the type of member will go to that general ledger account that you assign to it. This will be how you'll assign transactions and with their general ledger accounts throughout the system. For example, if you needed to assign an event to go to a particular G GL account, we could go under event management and click event registration. We'll then change our event and scroll down to the bottom of this page. Here we will see an option for general ledger account. Again, we will see all of our general ledger accounts set up within our system listed here that we can choose from. Uh, if this is correct, all we need to do then is continue to the next page and that will save that change. Uh, we do have additional options available within event registration for the QB sync. So if your event registration should not be all going to one GL account, for example, if the different packages should be going to different GL accounts or any of the custom fields you have set up with fees should go somewhere different, uh, there are options available for that. If you just let us know that's what you need, we can get your system configured that way. Otherwise, once your general ledger accounts are assigned within the event, you are all set to send over any event registration invoices for that particular event. Again, you will need to assign those general ledger accounts and classes throughout your system as needed. Uh, once they are assigned everywhere, you are then able to send those invoices over for those transactions. If we head back into membership billing, uh, the other option we talked about was mapping those members to customers. If you ever want to see where all of your members are mapped, you can again come in under QuickBooks interface, select the option of member status, and here on this page, you will see all of your members uh, with a column to their right labeled CUST, which is for customer, and their ID number. Uh, so this is letting you know what customer ID number they are mapped to over in QuickBooks. Uh, in the first column, you're going to see the name of the member uh, with their QB customer name appearing beneath them. If you ever need to change a customer or map to a new one, you again can click on the CUST link and do a search, uh, the same as we saw before, and map where you would like. If you have a member who is not mapped to a customer, they will appear instead of with a CUST link, they will have a link that says none to the right of them. If you do know that member is set up in QuickBooks already, you can click on the link for none, search the name as it would appear in QuickBooks, and then click to link to that customer. Again, if it's a brand new member, they do not have a QuickBooks customer set up yet, you can just leave them non-mapped the first time you try and send a transaction over for them. That will create a new customer record, and it will map that member with that new customer. Uh, once everything looks correct and all your members are mapped, you can again head out to the billing menu. Uh, the other option we had mentioned before is the ability to choose which transactions should or should not be sent over to QuickBooks during our sync. As we saw with our member John Smith, he did have one marked red, letting us know that that transaction was not going to go over to QuickBooks. Uh, so if we head again under the QuickBooks interface tab, we will see two options here, transaction status, member billing, and transaction status, event registration. These two pages are going to look the same and give us the same search and 
other options, but they're just splitting up by transaction type. So any member billing items, such as dues and payments, will appear under transaction status member billing, while all event invoices and payments would appear under transaction status event registration. Uh, so in this case, let's go ahead and head under transaction status member billing. Um, here you can see we can show particular dates, we can do transaction types, and whether or not they're linked to QuickBooks already. If we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we can see that some transactions are listed as will be exported, while others are listed as do not export. Uh, anything that says will be exported currently is what is pending and will sync over to QuickBooks the next time we sync. Anything marked with do not export currently is the, are those items that are going to appear with that red QB box uh, letting us know that they are not going to sync to QuickBooks. You can change this at any time by simply clicking this link. So if we decide this payment should go over to QuickBooks, we'll just click where it says do not export. Uh, once this page reloads, we'll be able to take a look at that again, and we can now see that transaction for John Smith is marked as will be exported. If we again decide, no, we don't want that payment in QuickBooks yet, the same thing, we can just click where it says will be exported, and that changes your transaction back to do not export. Uh, this can be changed at any time for you, so if down the road you decide you do want that transaction in QuickBooks, you can always then map it mark it to sync later um, and as soon as you mark something to sync with QuickBooks it will be added to that list of pending transactions and will be sent over the next time that you sync with your QuickBooks. Uh, once you have it all set up so all of the transactions you would like to sync are pending, uh, your Transactions are all mapped with a GL account in class if needed, and all of your members are assigned to their specific QB customer ID. Uh, that means that you are ready to proceed with your sync. To do this, we'll again go under QuickBooks interface. We'll come under sync transactions with QuickBooks, and we'll be brought back to our pending transactions page. Uh, you can see that it's split up by member billing invoices and then the member billing payments. Uh, if we had event transactions, they would be split similarly with the first event registration invoices and then event registration payments. And if you had the store function in place, they would be split up the same way with first the store invoices and then the store payments. Uh, this page just lets you get a clean review before you sync over uh, so you can make sure all of the transactions you would like or would not like are appearing correctly on this page and that everything looks the way you would expect it to. Uh, if everything does look correct and you're ready to sync, all you have to do is click the button to sync with QuickBooks. Uh, once you do this, it will bring you to the status page. As each transaction syncs, it will appear on this page and let you know that. Uh, once it's done syncing, you will see this option of end sync operation. Uh, that's just letting you know that this is complete. Uh, if we head back into the billing menu and take a look again at sync transactions with QuickBooks, we can see there are no longer any pending transactions, letting us know they're all within QuickBooks. If you do not see that end sync operation at the bottom of your page, that most likely means you have encountered an error. Uh, if that's the case, you will uh, see a red error message. Uh, if you ever get this and you're not sure how to proceed, you can just copy and paste that error message into an email to us or a ticket. Um, we'd be happy to help you with that. The errors do also try and give an explanation of why they're giving you that message. Uh, so if you feel comfortable and you're able to decipher what the error means, you can certainly just fix that yourself. Uh, once you've corrected that error, you can reload this page and sync again. Uh, it will proceed with the sync where it left off. Um, however, in this case, we of course did not get an error. Everything for John Smith says it goes over. Uh, so if we take a look at his record again, we can now see that all of our transactions are marked in green, except for that one payment that we had marked to not go over to QuickBooks. Um, so then if we head into QuickBooks and take a look at our customers, we should be able to see these new transactions appearing for John Smith. 
So if we head into his customer record, uh, let's see, it was invoice 1184 that we sent over as well as its corresponding payment. Uh, so we can see here that we have invoice 1184. It has the same transaction and due date as was listed for the invoice and is marked as paid. Um, and we can see that its corresponding payment is also within QuickBooks and assigned to that invoice. Uh, the only invoice then marked as not paid is this invoice 1182, uh, which we can see is paid within our system, but was marked to not have its payment go over. Uh, so that then all looks correct, and we can see that everything we synced did come over to this customer record, and all of the payments did correctly apply to their specific invoices. Uh, this is just a brief overview of how your sync would look and operate. Uh, if you do ever have more questions for us about that, you can, of course, send in a ticket or an email to us or check out our help desk. Uh, and hopefully this was able to help you figure out your sync a bit more.